Okay, so small operator error here. The, the, the poor, poor guys at Lucas. <laughs> they got me shaking their head. What is this goofball American doing to our mill here? So, uh, several people commented, uh, and I noticed it too in the video a little bit, on some of the bigger cuts, that you could kind of see the, um, the frame swaying a little bit. It didn't seem to affect accuracy. Everything looks really good, but they did give me an extra support here, a center support, uh, to hold this to, uh, on those really deep, those or those big cuts. So what I did is we, we raised it up and I didn't loosen the, the knob and it brought it up out of the ground here. So we'll, uh, we'll put that back in when we <laughs> get it to the right height. Okay, so this is very exciting. This is the biggest log I've ever cut on here. It is, what we got there? It's a two footer footer here at the butt but we're gonna get a lot of a lot of yield out of this and it's look how straight it is if you sight down that brine you can see it doesn't have very much of a hook a little bit of a swell right here uh, but so what I haven't done in the past I guess is I haven't really explained the process of what we're doing and again I have to preface that we are learning doing this this isn't the I, I was it was really helpful something I did wrong last time uh, some of you guys that have cut these all the time explained to me as I was cutting, doing my, my horizontal cut last and then the big timbers were falling on the blade and messing up the ends and several of you pointed out that if I switch that orientation, if I do that horizontal cut or vertical cut, I'll explain it to you. Anyway, so I'll show you what we're going to do is we have to determine the height first of the blade and then I make an initial cut along here to double check that my blade is right on the center. And center may not be where the where the pith is or, or the heart is right here, you can see that it's clear over here, but the majority of the wood is gonna be here. So center is gonna be something like that. So we'll just kind of determine all of that and then we'll start making our cuts and we'll cut our big beams. I think we'll get all of them out of this, don't you? Yeah, we should be able to get all three out of them. Yeah, this is nice. This is a first. <laughs> I told you, I, I've seen, um, the guys cut huge trees with these Lucases that were huge, like 15, 16 feet in diameter. And they actually had the sawmill sitting up on top 55 gallon drums and there, it was a, just incredible photos. Okay, so let's uh, get our height determined here. What's really nice here is that this Splash Guard brand is the is on the same plane as the blade. Oh nice. So you can kind of quickly see, get an eyeball of where you're at here. Not going to move as easily as you thought. It's not, it's especially <laughs> not with the aluminum block here. Okay, so we just kind of eyeballed it. We're really close here. This is a big, a big log to move. It doesn't have to move very much. And now I'll double check it. really good there. That looks pretty good. You think that's a good average there, Brian, or does it need to come over a little bit? 
I think it needs to come over a little bit. To, to the left? I would actually say slightly to the right, but. Okay, so we're gonna go into a little more depth today because there's been a lot of questions. I've just kind of did some overviews. Uh, so the blade is cooled with water. Uh, there's a little water tank right here. So right before I cut, it's just very simple. Just a little valve, I'll just open it up and it just drips and that'll help cool the blade and uh, help uh, any resins and things stick to it. Um, now the first thing we're gonna do is, is we're gonna drop it down and we're gonna make a cut along the top. That's gonna help me determine my, my depth because the logs sometimes will have a belly in them. And if you're only cutting on the tips, you know, you don't really know until you make that first cut. Also, it will check our alignment. Just double check. We have a big, beautiful log here. It's worth taking 10 minutes or so that, that it's set up properly so we get as much out of it as possible. Now, you'll notice that I'm not trying to get everything I can out of these things because we're not really concerned about cutting two buys and one buys and maximizing the log because this stuff is firewood. And so anything we get out of it is just is just kind of a bonus. So we're going to get the pieces that we need. You know, if we if we, it's easy for us to get a two by four or two by six, we'll do that. But we're primarily concerned in getting the beams. Everything else is going on the processor, and we'll just do firewood machine or the firewood with it. So that's why if it looks like we're being wasteful, we're not. That's just what our what our mo is today. So, all right, you ready, Brian? Start ready. cutting. Okay, so I made my first cut for two different reasons here. First off, I want to check that I'm down the center of the log. Now this may look a little deceiving because there's a bulge on this right hand side. So it's kind of a guessing game. Brian and I, we both looked at it and determined that we'll get the best, this is the best position on this log. Now if we come down here, you'll see on the center cut, look how shallow we are right here. We're, we're not even, we're not even out, we're in the cambium layer there of the, of, not even in the cambium layer there, we're still in the bark coming down here so what that tells us is where gives us how inconsistent this log is but now down here on the small end we're deep we're an inch deep or so so what we need to do is to raise this end about a half inch and lower that one about a half Okay, so Brian and I, we, uh, we flat topped this here, and we, we, we kind of talked about this, what we're gonna do. We have to cut a six by 10. So we have two choices. Either we, this is roughly the center line, either we cut it like this, or we cut them this way. And it seemed to us that it would make more sense to, to lay them and we'll cut them this way. So we'll cut six inches deep. We can get a six by 10 here. So it's going to be six this way and 10 this way. Not, we could get a lot more on this end, but we have to go by, if you look up there, you can see the narrowest spot of the log. 
that's what's going to determine our width here. So if we put our square on here, this is roughly the narrowest spot. We can see we have 10 inches right there. We're coming right to the end right there. If this is, actually this is probably narrower. It's somewhere in there. So we should be able to get a full, a nice, nice 10 inch beam out of here. Yeah, I, th I think it looks good. I think we're ready Even to Even if cut. there's a little wing on one edge, it'll be fine. Yeah, and I won't reject, I'll lose a bunch of material if there's a little bit of wane, meaning wane is when you have a little soft edge, a little bit of bark left on it. And if we just have that on one edge, we can turn it to the back side, and that's not a problem. I, I certainly wouldn't reject a nice beam because it had a little wane on the corner, so. All right, now the fun part. You ready? I'm ready. Another great day sawmilling. Any day you get to sawmill is a great day to me. Boy, I sure have enjoyed uh, Brian's help. It makes us uh, so much difference. And he's going to actually cut his first log uh, on the next video. So if you haven't already, now would be a wonderful time to click the thumbs up. It supports the channel and I really appreciate it. Also, let me know, know in the comments, would you guys like to for us to do another live broadcast, Mrs. W and I? And if so, what would the topic like to be? So please let me know in the comments. If we get enough requests for that, we, will, uh, we can schedule that. There was something else. I have special videos for you right here. So if you look there on the left top, uh, you'll see a video that I've picked out for you special and a mystery video or one that the algorithm has picked out for you that Google believes is the most suitable video for you to watch. So is it true? I don't know. I can't see your end. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.